All right. Hopefully we're live here. Uh, this is kind of a surprise live stream. I'm not really didn't announce this one. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and get started because it's not really about uh, doing a question and answer or something like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and get covered what I need to get covered. Uh, for people that want to join in, that's fine. Um, but I found out something interesting here. Um, this is not too far from where our office is, the town of Island Falls. And I was writing back and forth with another guy here in Maine and um, on comments of his video. And he told me about um, that uh, Theodore Roosevelt actually stayed in Island Falls or the Island Falls area, which was pretty interesting because I was a fan of Theodore Roosevelt back years ago. And, um, and Theodore Roosevelt would go and he would read his King James Bible at this place called Bible Point. And you can see it right down here. I'll zoom down into here. That's the Mattawamkeag River right there you can see. And this is Bible Point. There's a road that kind of goes back to it up in here and things, but it's a pretty long walk back into it, apparently, from what I'm hearing. Um, about a mile or so back in. So I will be doing a video, upcoming video on this thing of Bible Point. I think that's really fascinating. There's a bunch of historic stuff there. Uh, it's a historic site. So I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing that there's actually a place called Bible Point. So I thought that was pretty neat. Okay, topic number two, the whole baby formula thing. Um, there's all this shortage of baby formula and people are panicking and you know, oh, what do we do and all these mothers saying you know we need to have baby formula and um you know, we just can't some of us can't breastfeed and all this other stuff i want to say some things about that because i've studied that ex extensively um and i'm actually a product of uh experimentation i guess you could say in the thing of bottle feeding versus breastfeeding. Um, so I'll talk more about that here in a little bit, but I just, I keep hearing disinformation about this thing of, you know, this baby formula shortage and how it's a just a terrible thing and oh, what are we going to do? Um, so having said that, uh, just to start out, there are ways that you can make homemade baby formula. And of course the medical goonies will come out and they'll say, oh, this is so terrible. It's unsafe. It's just bad. What they won't tell you is that the baby formula itself is bad. You look into Similac. I think Similac is one of the more popular brand, brands of baby formula. It's dry powder and you mix it up with water and whatever else and you heat it up and you put it in the bottle and you drip it on your wrist and whatever, and, you know, like they do. Um, but Similac is, I think, 90% sugar or something crazy. And I mean, you can see right here, caro syrup baby formula recipe. Uh, caro syrup is basically corn syrup. And so, you know, this thing of, you know, the, the best way to uh, help your baby is to give them, you know, some kind of a milk type of thing and, and lots of sugar because then they'll, they'll, you know, really be anxious to drink it. Well, you're setting your child up for a lifetime of failure when you do that. It's terrible. Um, and, you know, I will be saying this later on, if you have done formula, you can still do breastfeeding later on. We'll get into that here as we continue because that's what my own mother did. But um, interesting thing here, I had seen her. This is the Healthy Home Economist. She has a channel on YouTube. Uh, her name's Sarah Pope. She's with the Weston A. Price Foundation and I've learned a lot of things from her. She's got some really good information. Don't agree on everything, of course, but... Uh, but it was interesting because I saw this. I tried to find the video on YouTube of her recipe for healthy baby formula. And it's not on YouTube anymore. And I clicked on this. Her website, our apologies, a cloud provider that is part of our website infrastructure is experiencing an outage that is preventing you from ex accessing our website. <clears throat> we, are, we have been assured that as soon as, this, as the outage is fixed, our website will be back online. Thank you for your patience while we wait for this very unusual situation to be rectified. And I'm thinking, what? You know, I, I mean, you know, I try not to be conspiratorial with everything, you know, but it just, I see that and I think, huh? You know, 
okay, the website just goes down when we're having all this shortage stuff. And she gets into it. You know, you can see here two cups of raw cow milk or organic whole milk yogurt, one and seven eighth cups of filtered water, one quarter cup liquid whey. She teaches you how to make whey. Um, four tablespoons of lactose, quarter teaspoon of um, by Bifidobacterium infantis, whatever they're some kind of a healthy probiotic probably. But um, another thing, goat's milk baby formula, I've heard of that. There's different ways to do it. But this whole thing, everybody's panicking. Oh, what can we do? Oh, no, what can we do? Um, I need to say a few things about this because I keep hearing this thing, this idiotic nonsense that there are some women that can't breastfeed. Now, there's a half truth to that um, because it's a nutritional issue. Um, but to be a little blunt here, um, women have breasts they're not for to increase your looks or whatever else that's their mammary glands to nurse a baby that's normal that's natural okay if you go out in the field not trying to compare women to cows or whatever but you go out into a field and you see that cow has udders hanging down and that one has does not and he has horns up here well you're not dealing with two cows you're dealing with a cow and a bull you know um, a woman has breasts for the purpose of breastfeeding. That's the whole deal. And of course, now you have people, you know, getting into the whole thing of, you know, worshiping bodies and whatever else. Uh, well, you know, there are some women that can't breastfeed. That That is nonsense. Okay. Now, having said that, any woman has the potential to breastfeed. Let me say that. Why then can certain women not breastfeed? Well, uh, this right here, um, this website here about the risks risks of abortion. They get into it. You get down through here. It talks about you know if women get an abortion. There's a lot of bad things that can happen, and um, and they get into all these different things here, and they don't get into the one I was going to cover. But one of the things that they do talk about is breast cancer, and they say well the abortion people will say no this isn't true and whatever else. But I believe it's completely true. 40% risk increase of breast cancer. Now, let me explain something. I studied the thing of childbirthing very much in depth. Why? Um, well, if you've ever seen this video, Natural Free Birthing for Bible Believers, there's my son Oliver as a little boy, myself, my wife. We had a free birth at home, no midwife, no doctor, no anything. It was my wife, myself, the Lord, and I was the one that delivered my son. So I studied a lot about the thing of um, women being with child, the proper nutrition, birthing the child, what do you do when they come out, all the different stuff. Don't need to get into all of it. And, um, and one thing that I had noticed while I was studying, I, I mean, I read books on it and, and watched quite a few videos, read lots of articles and things. One thing I've noticed is when women stop their a normal being with child and delivering that child. I don't like to use the word pregnant. That's a modern term. Um, it's being you're with child is the Bible term. When women stop that natural process, um, it creates a lot of problems with the body. I was there. I saw the hormonal stuff my wife went through of, you know, the all the pain of contractions and everything else and then the actual birthing and um, the whole thing. And then the child comes out and then that feeling of just euphoria of, oh, wow, you know, and everything else. And I delivered my son, took him out, wiped him down a little bit with a towel. He started crying. I handed him to my wife and she put him right to her breast and instantly he latched perfectly. Praise the Lord. And he started to nurse. No problem. And he never had a problem with nursing. Um, so this. I have a major attitude towards this whole thing of some women can't nurse. But here's the problem, okay, because there is a problem with some women. And I need to say this. When women get cesarean, cesarean sections or when they get abortions, you're basically halting the body's natural process of the mammary glands are starting to get ready for the child to be born. The hormones are changing. Okay, it's time for the contractions. The baby comes out. Now you have the, the whole thing of you know, the placenta needs to come out, all the different stuff that goes on, the, you know, 
I mean, you have the water breaking beforehand and you know, all the different things that go into childbirthing. And all of a sudden you just stop that thing. And a woman's, you know, I knew of a woman literally in the past that she said, as soon as I feel the contractions, they're putting me under and I'm going to have the baby cut out. I'm not going through the pain. I just am not doing it. Well, you're stopping the natural process is what you're doing. And then, oh, I'm having a hard time with nursing. You, you just stop the whole process. Abortion is terrible. I mean, it really stops the process. You killed the baby, murdered your own child. But these women, they'll do that stuff. They have cesarean sections. They have abortions. There's other toxic issues with their bodies. And then they try to actually be a mother and actually try to breastfeed. And then they say, oh, I can't do it. I don't know what's going on. Well, there's problems there. Okay. And, you know, I just, I think that it's something that God is judging a lot of these women. And, you know, oh, now I, I can't do this and whatever else. Why would God allow this? Well, why did you kill your baby? Why didn't you go through with the whole, you know, normal birthing and not have a cesarean section? The whole deal. You know, and I know that there are some women that will say, well, what about this? What about that? You know, I get it. But the whole point is it's a natural process. And to have a child, you know, I mean, you don't hear, you know, of, of uh, hey, there's some, I just saw a mother deer and a, and a fawn and, and the she's really upset she can't find formula or something. You know, no, they are the animals out in nature. They have babies and, and everything just fine. So. But whatever. But um, to tell my own story here, not the thing of of uh, me helping my wife birth our son and everything else and, and being there for her. And, you know, she one of the problems my wife had was overactive letdown is what it's called, where there's too much milk when she's nursing. And so what did we do? Oh, we went to the hospital and we, you know, did it. No, what we did is it's just a, some herbal cures increase some different things and i think she was taking a red raspberry leaf tea which really helps you know make the milk supply happen and we said no and then i think it was oregano it's been so many years ago i don't remember the exact thing but you know i think it was oregano that she took and that slowed it down and it was fine not a problem so but yeah when i was a, a little baby before i was born actually um there were three children before me uh, my oldest brother, and then my oldest sister, and then my next brother after that. And then I was born, you know, the fourth child that was kept. There was actually another boy in there that was given away, but that's another story. But um, the first three children that my parents kept, uh, those first three children were all bottle fed. And, you know, my, because my mother was told by the doctors. And this is going back in the, into the 1960s. She was told by the doctors that she was not able to breastfeed. Just not possible. You can't breastfeed. I'm sorry. There are some women that can't. She was told by the doctors. When she became with child with me, I was number four. Her, the next door neighbor at Peach Lane down in Ronks, Pennsylvania, the road that I grew up on, our next door neighbor, Jean Henry was her name. And she was in a natural health. And she told my mother, she said, that is nonsense. Of course you can breastfeed. And she was part of the La Leche League. And she said, come with me. You're going, I'm going to take you to some of these meetings and they'll tell you, they'll show you how to do it and everything else. And she went, she was convinced and she nursed me for I think two years, uh, first two years of my life. So, and then she did the same thing with my sister. So you have a woman that had four children Nur or bottle fed three of them, like I said, gave the one up. Bottle fed three of them, told the whole time, you can't, you know, breastfeed. Got straightened out and on me and then my younger sister, she bottle or she breastfed just fine. Or uh, then I think I said I she can't bottle feed. She couldn't breastfeed. But my point is, you know, a lot of this stuff out there where the doctors are saying, Oh, you can't, you know, breastfeed and whatever else, it's a lie. These, these people, they're all tied in. The doctors are tied in with all this money-making stuff. And it just ticks me off. It really angers me. So you say, but are there any exceptions? Well, of course there are some exceptions. What if you have a, a mother that can't take care of the child or the mother that dies or something, and then the grandparents have to take care of the baby? Well, obviously, the grandmother can't nurse 
you know, the the baby? What if you have a baby that's um, adopted or something like that? Well, of course, I get it. I understand. And again, that's what this is for. Find one that has good organic type ingredients and whatever else, and you can make your own formula. It's not a big deal. So I just wanted to, I keep hearing this thing, people coming out with the news and saying, oh, there's some women that just can't breastfeed. Ah, man. Um, it just, that angers me. That really angers me because people are just perpetuating this false medical establishment system. Um, but I find it interesting. I'll share a verse of scripture here real quick. Um, sort of a, I found something with the Lord over the years, and that is a lot, a lot of times he'll send little warnings. It's not the actual prophecy being fulfilled, but it's kind of a little pre-prophecy, you know, so to speak. It's kind of an interesting thing here. Matthew chapter 24, verse 19. And woe unto them that are with child. Notice it's not pregnant. With child. It's a child in there. It's not a fetus or whatever else that you can just abort if you don't like it. And to them that give suck in those days. Breastfeeding. Okay. Uh, women didn't use bottles or baby formula in the Bible. Okay. Uh, rather interesting there. And it's funny because if you study the story of Moses, um, Pharaoh's daughter takes him in, but she hires a Hebrew woman to nurse him, which is, ends up being Moses' actual mother. But it's kind of an interesting thing there. So you would actually in the past, hey, I can't take care of this baby. Let me find a woman who is currently able to nurse children. Hey, could you please nurse this baby for me? They didn't say, oh, what can we do to find baby formula or something? So people start messing around with their health and all of a sudden, oh, I can't do this. and I can't do that. I have all these issues. It's probably genetic. It's not genetic. So just a little rant on that thing. That, that's another one of those things that really angers me. But another little Scripture tie-in thing here. Watch this. Uh, this is May 9th, 2022. Um, community of Rio Verde, foothills heads towards cutoff, water cutoff in six months. Um, a lot of areas down in Arizona and California as well are running out of water, which is really interesting. I'm not going to play the video, but this woman standing there, and she's showing all this rainwater catchment, and she's saying about She's got 5,000 gallons of water in this one tank underneath the ground. And, you know, we get water shipments, you know, once a week and everything. And I'm thinking, how much water do you really need? I mean, we, in our off-grid system here, you know, we do not have running water. We have to go to a spring and get our water from a spring and haul it back and whatever. Um, we don't use very much water. We use very little. And I think these people that are just using just huge amounts of water you know all we need you know twenty thousand gallons of water a year or something it's just odd but i find it interesting because there's a lot of evil stuff going on in in uh, phoenix arizona and different parts of california so reading in our family devotions the other night we were in psalm 107 uh, where are we at here psalm 107 verse 33 and 34 well, they're kind of an indirect prophecy thing uh, coming to pass. He turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Hmm. I know a couple different false ministries that are in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, James White, uh, Stephen Anderson. You know, just find that kind of an interesting thing. I guess they're maybe not in Phoenix, Anderson's and Tempe or whatever, but wherever he's at. But it's kind of an interesting thing that uh, Scripture is being fulfilled there. The people are wicked and God's just going to dry things up. So found that to be rather interesting. So uh, just a real quick video here uh, just to kind of cover some three different little things there but uh, really looking forward to get coming out here to the bible point um looked really beautiful i saw a guy did a video on youtube and it looked like a really neat spot um i'll just kind of zoom out here uh 
here's Bible Point over here, and there's the town of Patton where our office is at. So um, it's not very far away, but uh, definitely a remote area back in there. Not a whole lot of people around or anything else. So looking forward to trying that out. Probably do a sermon over there or something. Been wanting to get back out, but we've been really busy with doing firewood and uh, everything. So um, just been really busy. Um, but uh, one other thing. I'll say this uh, before I close out the live stream here. Um, if you could just please pray for my wife. She's going through some difficulties with the computer thing. Um, couldn't figure out how to make it post. It's called uh, get the thing running and whatever. And um, and went to a technician in the area, and he determined that the motherboard is shot. It's not a good one. So um, it just the supply chain stuff right now is a problem and then you know so it's been taking us forever to try to find the parts and she's putting all kinds of time into studying how to put this into there and how to plug that into there and you know and now we have to send things back to the manufacturer you know for the motherboard and, and so just please pray the lord gives her strength to get through this whole thing and um so uh But anyhow, um, but I'm going to get going now. So um, I've been getting away from these live streams a little bit, but I'm going to start doing more of them. Just kind of these little short things. I have uh, some uh, bigger studies coming up. Um, I'd like to actually hear from people in the comment section. Um, what do you think about the Sunday morning um, premiere video? I'm trying to do that as a way to get you know, that way people that don't have Babel buildings or whatever, they're used to seeing preaching or whatever on Sunday morning, they can tune in. I was doing a live stream, but uh, the live stream was just getting to be a little bit too much and there was issues with it and whatever. But I'm thinking I'd like to have, you know, I used to, when I was down in Pennsylvania before we moved to Maine, I used to do a thing of, I'd have a Sunday morning video every week. So I'm going to try to get back to that, and I'm probably just going to do a pre-recorded message that will be premiered on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. is probably what I'm going to do. And sometimes, like last week, I tuned into it, um, but uh, I'm thinking about doing that on a weekly basis. Just release at least one video every week, Sunday morning. So um, give me your thoughts on that in the comments. I'd appreciate hearing from you. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.